Good day, this is Michael with Iconesis. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video using one of our 2019 version photography turntables and we'll be communicating the latest features and functionality. Uh, we'll also be working with an external lighting setup today and a Canon DSLR camera and the latest version of our Shutterstream software version 6.1. Uh, so I do have my camera connected via USB. I've also got my uh, camera sitting on a tripod pointing at the turntable. As you can see here, we're working with one of our acrylic risers. Now the first thing that we're going to notice inside of our software is uh, the live view. So this is a real-time preview of what our camera sees displayed on the monitor in real-time. Uh, you do first and foremost have full control over your camera settings. So let's go and optimize our camera settings. Uh, the bulbs I'm using are daylight balance, so I'm going to adjust that color temperature. And just watch the live view window as I make these changes. You're going to actually see the results in real time as I make changes to my aperture, shutter speed, white balance, and ISO. So I'm going to find just a better aperture value, and I'll probably go up to about 18 so I can be sure that I'm going to capture the shoe. Um, in full focus front to back and my last variable to change will be my shutter speed and basically this one's going to be responsible for my finding the optimal uh, kind of exposure uh, and essentially what I'm trying to do here is I'm not too worried about the background because we can fix that in post production very easily um, but we're going to really try to just emulate the actual color of the product uh, because uh, that should be the most important thing that you do when shooting your product images is is just the the color accuracy just so you can communicate your products to the you know to your clients correctly so that looks pretty good there um, the next thing I'm gonna do is we do have full control over adjusting our um, our focal point uh, near and far and actually that looks quite good as far as the overall focus so I'm gonna leave it at that focal point here um, now what I want to do is hit the 360 button and this is going to enter into the 360 shooting mode. Let me just move this window off to the side and what I want to do is let me just make this a bit bigger so I can communicate a lot of the features and functionality inside of here. So this is kind of the complete uh, functions. You're going to have your turntable shooting mode, the model of the turntable you're working with, um, number of frames uh, if you're shooting 360 product photography and or video if you're shooting 360 product video and we'll be doing 360 product photography today so inside of here we're gonna actually select our number of frames um, all of our 2019 version turntables um, will have the ability to shoot over 5,000 images per 360 revolution so you can actually manually enter in whatever number you want inside of here um, now that seems like a lot of overkill and, and yes it is um, it's just important to denote just how accurate these turntables and how high quality these turntables are um, I'll probably just shoot 72 for the purpose of this demo uh, that will be a completely automated process as we'll see we also do have custom angles this can actually be used just to automate still image capture and we do have a video showing that workflow if you have any if you have any questions regarding that please let us know um, number of turns would be if you're shooting multi-row 360 to kind of create a 3D product view effect. Um, the next thing that you can see here is the step width, shorter or faster, and let me just communicate that. I'm going to hit this play button, and we're going to see it starts to pre-rotate our turntable in whatever direction was specified over here, clockwise or counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is going to make more sense for a left shoe. Um, but let me just kind of go back to the step width. We can actually fully control how fast or how slow the turntable is going to spin. And this variable speed control is extremely nice, especially if you're going to be doing some video production. It's nice to have the functionality and or if you're shooting maybe macro photography, you can slow it down, just kind of maybe eliminate the initial jerk um, that might shake some products when it's sitting on the turntable. Um, so we're just going to kind of find our optimal mode. When shooting a shoe, we shouldn't have any problems with shooting at the fastest rate. Um, but what I'm going to do here is just let me stop my turntable, speed it up. And you do have a post and pre-delay. That would mean pre-delay would be turn, stop, wait X number of seconds, and then capture the image. So if you did notice, maybe it was, for instance, shooting a water bottle. And there's as it turns and stops, the water shakes back and forth inside. You can go ahead and add a pre-delay that will, you can say, wait 10 seconds before you capture the image. So that's a nice feature um, if, if required. I'll just probably put that to 
Well, I'll leave it at one for the purpose of this demo. So now what we want to do here is we've kind of discussed all the features and functionality. Let's pre-rotate rotate the turntable again. And what I want to do here is pre-crop my subject. That is define the area that I'm going to shoot in 360. Um, because I don't want to shoot the whole frame. You can kind of see the acrylic riser, the metal bolts at the bottom that hold up the acrylic legs and some more stuff kind of going on up front here. So what I want to do here is essentially get rid of all that stuff and I'm doing so by adjusting my crop marker. Now the nice thing about crop too is you can always define your crop in a customer ratio uh, such as an 8 by 5 maybe you have a stock image size that you require for your website you can define that whereas you can also define it as a perfect square. So if you need images that say 500 by 500 pixels or you know 1500 by 1500 pixels, you can define that inside of the software and it'll retain your crop to a perfect one-to-one -one ratio. Now that we're ready to, we've, we've pre-cropped, we've ensured our camera exposure settings are good, we've ensured our, our focal point is good. Now all that we're gonna do is hit start and this will automate our image capture in a turn stop snap workflow and as images are captured they're instantly uploaded to the computer where we can actually see the result in real time Now that we're done capturing our set of images, as we can see a total of 72 is denoted in the bottom left hand corner. What we want to do is select that set of images, which we can do using the batch select all tool, and then enter into the editing mode. Shutterstream 360 product photography software includes a vast image editing suite that allows users to adjust images and get them web ready in just a couple seconds. Uh, as you can see here we do have our white balance tool which can allow us to make some color corrections if required. We might want to make a slight color correction inside of the software. Let me just find kind of an optimal value here. And we might want to add a little bit of tint to that just to kind of match the colors and while I'm doing this I'm actually looking back at the actual product itself just to kind of find the optimal optimal setting so that looks pretty good there we've made just a very slight color uh, color temperature change and tint uh, next thing I'm going to do is increase my sharpness and now I do want to play a little bit with the uh, my uh, my levels tool here and I just want to provide a little bit more contrast I can do that by pulling out this maybe not that extreme but pulling out the black uh, levels and then I'm going to just make a slight adjustment to the light or the the lighter colors in the frame using the right reference bar and then after I've made my changes what I can do now is actually hit apply to all and in a batch process it'll go through and edit that set of images Now that we've completed those basic edits, we could go one step further. Uh, some of our customers do require backgrounds removed from their subject. Uh, this is actually on pure white already. Um, but what we can actually do is, should we wish to take this to maybe a transparent background and output as a TIFF or PNG file? Uh, what we can actually do is, pardon me, I'll use my, uh, well, we've got a few different background removal tools. Um, this one would be using our, kind of our lasso tool here. And we can see right now the area that's blinking is what's being cut out. And you can see there is quite a big um, kind of gap, kind of hue around the subject. So what I'm actually going to do is just bring down my threshold to about uh, one, my sensitivity to about one. And we can inspect this image further. Uh, the other thing that we can see here is the edge blending is, is quite high. So I want to minimize that. Let's take that down to about two. We'll just smooth it a bit. And then the other thing that we'll want to do, because you can see there is a little tad bit of white, we can actually grow that mask. And we'll grow it by, let's say, uh, three pixels. And we're working with a lot of pixels here. We have about 4,000 by 2,500 pixels. I'll hit apply to all. Actually, I'll just hit apply in this case, and you can see just to this one image, it'll remove the products directly from the background. 
so that we have it on a transparent background. So let me hit close. Again, you can do that directly inside of a, uh, in a batch process if required. But as you can see that image, and let me just inspect this image here just to show you what a good job it did of actually removing the background. So let me zoom that back out to let's say 24% and let me just hit, uh, well, let me just output it because right now the default if I save as JPEG will be white. So I'll just go ahead and export all these images here. So I'll use my batch save tool. We'll call this new balance shoe. I can choose to resize. Maybe I want all these images at let's say 1500 pixels wide. That looks good. I will hit OK. I'm saving to whatever folder I'd specified right here. And that will export the individual set of images. Now that we've completed our saving process, we can go ahead and see we have our 72 individual frames inside of here. Now what we'll do is we'll batch select all these. Let me just move this window off to the side here because I'm going to open up our 360 view creator. Now this is included with the uh, purchase and this allows you to compose your individual frames into an interactive 360 product view. Uh, we do offer multiple different formats that include interactive HTML5 and interactive MP4. Then standard output options like as animated GIF and an MP4 video. So let's go ahead and let's make a change here. Um, We'll just put, uh, let's say, 450 pixels tall. Right now, we're just defining what size we wish to output at. Again, we have 1,500 pixel wide images. So right now, if I have this checkbox over here selected, and I go ahead and say, OK, click this Zoom button, you're going to see that's a 3x zoom. Now, these are fully customizable. You can customize the look and feel of the player buttons as well, the location of the buttons. Kind of a lot more, our web pages do uh, discuss that uh, in greater depth. And what I'll do now is I'll just call this shoe 360 and we'll save it to our 360 product images folder and I'll hit save. And simply from there, we can go ahead and view our interactive 360 output. We'll see right here shoe and we'll view this as the iframe file. And this will show it in a browser. Now these are completely uh, you can host them on your own servers uh, or else you can upload directly to our servers. And again, that's an interactive 360 product view of what we just created in just minutes. Our tools are do-it-yourself tools, no experience required. They do include free technical support as well. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email us at contact at iconesis.com. Thank you.